जय गुरुदेव वेलकम टू नारदा भक्ति सूत्र 17 ड्वेल इन द डिवाइन मेनी पीपल वर आस्किंग मी ओ वी आर ऑलमोस्ट टूवर्ड्स द एंड ऑफ नारदा बट समहाउ आई एम स्टिल कंफ्यूज आई एम नॉट इन दैट स्टेट ऑफ डिवाइन लव इज समथिंग लैकिंग इन मी has such a question come up in you like this if it has you better not start beating yourself up ha huh? divine love is not something to be achieved or attained it's it's something which is a happening remember like your first love it just happened right can you see you made an effort to achieve that love with that woman or that man no love just happens exactly like that divine love is a happening if it has not happened to you yet on the spiritual path it's okay you do not have to beat yourself up for it but understanding the path of bhakti or this path of devotion is essential why because when that falling in love happens it is like a restlessness remember you are falling in love with that childhood sweetheart years ago there were butterflies in the stomach there was anxiety there was restlessness you didn't know what was happening to you even sometimes you felt maybe i'm falling sick yeah sometimes you felt maybe i'm going crazy you feel insanity you feel as if there is some kind of madness taking over you you just cannot pinpoint what is happening to me am i physically sick am i mentally sick what is happening that understanding or that clarity is not there in that phase of falling in love exactly the similar kind of state happens when the divine love dawns on you and when such a state dawns on you you should know what it is right so narada bhakti sutra the scripture of bhakti yoga actually just describes to you what happens in that state yeah don't start running running oh i have to attain divine love okay i have to do something to attain divine love that would be so silly yeah so don't go down this path yes dwell in the divine means what recognizing that everything is that consciousness okay today i do not see it yes i have not arisen that high in my meditation to be able to recognize that consciousness everywhere it's okay i have not been able to recognize but at least i understand this intellectually that all this is not prakriti process of elimination at least can happen yeah this is just an expression of that consciousness it is not an individual existence of prakriti for example this glass is just an individual expression of that consciousness this glass does not have its own individual existence without that consciousness at least this understanding you can come to through narada bhakti sutras that is good enough yeah recognizing this that i am the light and that knowledge within me is just covered by layers of dirt and narada bhakti sutra 
aims towards just removing some of these layers at least so that that light can at least be seen through or at least a silhouette of that light existing behind that curtain of dust can be perceived yeah, can be recognized by you that is the whole purpose of Narada Bhakti Sutras yeah. even if divine love is taking some time to happen to you let it happen let it take its time yeah. so now if it's taking its time what should I do here Narada prescribes some sutras. Let's look at these sutras. The first one is Sukha Dukha. You understand Sukha? Pleasure. You understand Dukha? Pain. Third, Ichha. You understand Ichha? Wanting something. Desiring something. Labha. Break it. Labha. Labha is how will I profit from this? That is Labha. Yeah. Let's look at these four first. Gurudev gave us four stories right in the beginning. Yeah. These four stories were for these four words. Yeah. What was the first story? About a journalist who came to Gurudev. The journalist was just trying to gain something. Here, gain a story. Yeah. Get some story to you know, publish and make his or her name. So, what was the word in the sutra which, for which the story was uh, applicable? Labha. Yeah. Just looking to gain something is a tendency of the mind. Yeah? What will I gain from this? What will I gain from this? Isn't this the tendency of your mind too? Yeah? Observe. Really observe. Go with it. Whenever you are looking to do some action, inside, hidden behind all the greatness of the action and your presence of mind and your uh, fantastic communication and presentation of all that action somewhere deep down is there a desire looking oh what will I gain from this yeah. homework number one observe yourself for the next few days if you can do it all the next seven days until we meet next week. Keep observing everything that I want to do. Behind that, is there a greed to get some profit out of it? Do I want something? Maybe I'm looking for money out of this. Maybe I'm looking for name out of this. Maybe fame. Maybe I'm looking for the other person to pat my back and say, Oh, bravo, fantastic. Appreciation. Maybe I'm looking for somebody else to fall down. You know, and me to, you know, get a better name in front of the other person. Something like that. Your mind can play a lot of games. You know that, right? Yeah. So homework number one recognize that behind every action of mine is there some kind of gain I am looking for or labha that I am looking for. What was the other story Gurudev told you? Alexander the Great. Yeah, He kept on conquering one city after another, one town after another. And what did they bring to him? a piece of gold and said this is your bread and he said how can I eat it so they said oh, if all you need is bread don't you get it where you come from why do you need to conquer everything yes what was there behind Alexander conquering all this what was behind that action 
a false sense that I will get sukha. Yeah, the first word sukha. That I will get sukha from being an emperor or a king of all the kingdoms or of all the towns or of ruling so many people. Yeah. Look at yourself. In your own small way, are you Alexander? I know you might not be trying to conquer towns and cities, but you could be trying to just conquer over your friends, gain a better foothold over the social circle that you are in, trying to prove that you are also something or someone better than the others. Is that there somewhere lurking behind? This is your homework number two. Sometimes we do it very subtly also. Yeah, we may do it to our family members just to prove that I am right and you are wrong. This is also a way, in a subtle way that you have become Alexander where your ego has pushed somebody else down. Yeah. Just a small little thing where I say I am right and you are wrong. I am really hurting people, ain't I? Yeah. Now, again, this does not mean when somebody is really wrong, you should not tell them. Yes, say it nicely. Without putting the other person down is important. Yeah. Here, it's not about the external action. It is the intention behind that action. If my intention is from my ego to put the other person down, or to prove I am something bigger or greater or better, yeah, then I've become Alexander in my own way. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So, homework number two. Write it down. Have you become Alexander in your own way? Maybe it's just through your ego. Yeah. What was the next story? about Mullah Nasruddin where he is keeping a tab of what he bought. The chair is mine and the curtain is yours and things like that. Yeah, Even after he gets married, just in case they get divorced. Yeah, what was this story about? It is actually a story about fear of dukkha that can come up in the future. That's why I'm keeping that record, no? What if divorce happens? Then we have to split up all the property. Might as well do it right from the beginning. Dukkha. Fear of foreboding or dukkha or anything that can come up in the future. That current fear is also dukkha. In short, Fear of Dukkha is also Dukkha. You are already in Dukkha. You are already in pain. Yeah. You are already in misery. Dukkha means misery. Yeah. So homework number three. Are you in misery? Maybe you don't keep a calculation of what is yours and what is the other person's. But still, when I am fearing that some loss should not happen to me or this thing should not go away or this person should not leave me and go away. When I am constantly living in that fear, I am miserable. I am already in Dukkha. So the homework is to identify, do you have any such fears of losing people, situations or things? Maybe you are in a fantastic situation in office. Maybe you are the manager and you have this fear, oh if I perform really bad and I don't keep up to this level, I might get demoted. Fear of losing the position. Similarly, fear of losing my loved one. Similarly, fear of losing my friends. Similarly, fear of losing respect 
and honor in society or fear of losing appreciation that I am getting today or I should continue to get this appreciation or fear of criticism all this comes under the gamut of Dukkha yeah. and the fourth word Ikcha Ikcha means desire this is the most important homework for you everything that you do in life everything even if it is to come and attend this session if it is to get up go and eat or go to sleep wake up in the morning and go to work or take care of the family or clean up your house or get your car serviced everything has an ikcha behind it observe it ikcha is a desire yeah? a want want to do something is ikcha yeah. when this desire changes from a simple want to a longing and when that longing turns into a craving and when that craving turns into an obsession is very subtle the distinguishing lines between this are very very subtle you can tip over to the other side without being aware yeah. very simply if we want to make a distinguishing you know one distinguishing factor for each of them it can be put in as want is of the head the head says I want this this is good only this is good and I want this. That want becomes a longing in you. Oh, I really want this. I really want this. Now from the head, this has moved to the heart. Yeah. I really want this. I really want this. Oh my God. I really want this. Maybe I don't deserve it. That's why it's not coming to me. Maybe I don't have those kind of resources or I'm not resourceful enough to be able to obtain it. That's why it's not coming to me. Now what happens? This longing, the fire increases even more and that becomes a craving. Now what is the difference? Is want was in the head, longing was in the heart. Now the craving has overtaken me and is, has generated a feverishness in me which is there constantly. And this operates at both head, heart, head, heart, head, heart. Yeah? This is the stage of Raga. You recognize it here that you have come into the fiery stage of Raga Dvesha. This is where impressions get created. These impressions lead to future Agami Karma. And of course when you crave something and you don't get it and you get really angry and then that anger creates more drama, all that is obsession. So you know that part of it. Now here Gurudev says what to do when I am in such a situation. How do we identify it and what can be done about it? Narada has advised not even half a second. Shan is second, Ardham is half. Api also, Vyartham na. Do not waste even half a second on either of these. Either of what? Sukha which is pleasure. Dukkha, which is pain, Labha, which is greed or wanting to gain something or profit from something and Ikcha, desire. Yeah? Desire is both Raga and Dvesha. Huh? I don't want to see this person or I don't want this thing to happen to me is also desire. Yeah? These four, you keep them far away from you, he says. Not even for half a second 
should you let them overtake you so what should you do you should kale pratikshamane pratiksha is a hindi word to wait for kale is for that time what time is he talking about he's talking about the time when you actually fall in divine love when divine love just bursts out of you and when you are in that divine love then sukha dukha ichha and labha four of them will not bother you naturally they won't but till the time that natural state is not reached till that time you have to be constantly aware like a watchman yeah what is the job of a watchman to guard against evil to guard against thieves and robbers evil in short and what are the evils that can affect you sukha dukha labha and ichha you would say how is sukha an evil sukha is pleasure yes but when i want pleasure i start running behind it feverishly and when i keep running behind it feverishly and i do not obtain it then what happens to me inside greed comes up anger comes up violence comes up all these things can start coming up yeah and what was the root cause because i was running behind sukha yes so then what to do he gives you the next sutra ahimsa be non violent i just explained to you know when you run behind sukha or pleasure and you do not get it anger comes up very automatic it is automatic reaction to not getting what i want yeah that is the way ego reacts ego gets angry how dare i not get this and in that anger i can slash with my tongue right and left and hurt people isn't it yeah so now narada is giving you techniques how to deal with it technique number 1 ahimsa means non violence yes not just i will not take a knife and stab you yeah not that kind of non violence only but non violence of speech not hurting another individual intentionally yeah if i am not even saying anything to somebody and just keeping quiet just being silent somebody else can still get angry somebody else can still feel hurt oh now you're giving me the silent treatment so intentionally not hurting is important it's not about the external action it's inside i should not have the intention of hurting another person that is ahimsa got it yeah if i have cultivated ahimsa non violence then i will get a strong hold over these sukha dukha ichha and labha which keep coming up they will keep coming up yeah because that's how i've conditioned my mind so they keep coming up now how do i hold them put them down is with the help of all these sutras one is ahimsa two is satya satya means what does satya mean just speaking the truth living in the truth and what is the truth that everything is changing nothing is permanent all this people are changing situations are changing things are changing the climate changes surroundings change i am also changing this body is also changing everything is changing everything is in a transition yes. this is the truth when you see that everything is changing 
And then you don't hold on to something. Oh, he said something. He thinks badly about me. He said bad, bad to me. I am holding on to this. Yeah? Because I think this is permanent. But the moment I see the truth, oh, this is all temporary. Even he, the person who is saying this will not be there tomorrow. His feelings are temporary. His thoughts are temporary. They keep changing. Then I can easily let go of this that I am holding on to. Yes? Satya means being established in truth. Yes? And truth means everything is changing. Yes? Ahimsa, Satya, Shaucha. What is Shaucha? Cleanliness. Not cleanliness of this body externally only. Cleanliness of this mind. Yeah. What is the meaning of maintaining cleanliness of the mind? Yeah. Not just meditation and doing Kriya. But not letting negativity harbor here. Yeah, if I am doing all meditation and Kriya and everything, I am very uh, committed to my practice. But the moment I open my eyes, I am always thinking, oh, how should I um, create a fight between person A and person B and doing all the conspiracy and politics and thinking all negative stuff. My mind is unclean. A shaucha that is. You see what I am saying? Yeah. Do not be in dirt. Do not be in a shaucha. Yeah. That is the state of being completely dirty. It's no use how much ever meditation and kriya and pranayam you do. If internally your mind is wallowing in negativity. Negativity of greed, jealousy, competition, hatred, no use. Yeah. So, Shaucha means cleanliness. So, what are the techniques we've learned so far? Ahimsa, non-violence. Second, Satya, truth. Third, Shaucha, cleanliness, which is cleanliness, inner cleanliness. And now the fourth, Daya, compassion. Yeah? Compassion does not need to be cultivated. It is my own nature, it is my swabhava. Compassion is your nature. It just needs to be kindled. Why does something need to be kindled if it is my nature? Because it is buried. It is buried under negativity. And it is my own fault. I have just contributed to that negativity through my ragas and dveshas for people, situations and things. I have held on to ragas and dveshas lifetime after lifetime. Obviously holding on to I want this and I don't want this has led to a very thick curtain of negativity in me which is lying Covering compassion under it. My nature, my core nature is under this curtain. Yes. And my core nature is compassion, is love. So all it needs is some kindling. Kindling means remove the dirt from the top. It is already there. Yes. So compassion is your nature. Just recognize it. Let go of the dirt of negativity of ragas and dveshas and you will see that you are already the light of daya, of compassion. Yes, just take all that covering stress away. Yeah. Guruji said, no, there are no rules to love. No restrictions. But it is good to follow these rules. Which rules? Again, one, ahimsa, which is non-violence. Two, satya, truth. Three, shaucha, cleanliness. 
for Daya. Yeah? And fifth is Astikya. Daya and Astikya. And Adi is etc. So, in Sanskrit, you can join two, three words and make one big word. Yeah, this is one of them. So, Daya is compassion, Astikya is faith and Adi is etc. What does he mean by faith? What is faith? Astikya means faith in divinity. There is a supreme power, some power in this existence which I cannot understand through this mind and intellect. How much ever I try to understand it and grasp it with my intellect, I am not capable of. I have faith in that power. I have faith that it runs this entire creation on the laws of karma and niyati. But I have not seen it. I have not touched it. I have not tasted it. I cannot smell it. I cannot hear it. It is beyond my five senses. Yes. My domain is five senses. Whatever falls into these five senses, I can grasp. But this is beyond the domain of my five senses. I still have faith in it. When you are in this kind of a state, it is called astikya. Yes, astikya means having faith in that divinity, that power. Yeah. Guruji gave you a beautiful distinction between an atheist and somebody who has faith. Yeah, An atheist says, I do not believe in anything. Yeah, but what do you mean by anything? And you do not even believe in the person saying this? Who are you? Yeah, so there itself he says, there can never be an honest atheist. But the one who has faith, yeah, one who can completely surrender to that which is beyond the grasp of the five senses, such a one can surrender his ego, can let go of that I, 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 which is the cause of Raga and Dvesha and this negativity covering the light within. Yeah? The moment I can let go of the I, I let go of this negativity, this curtain covering the light. That light comes through, it shines forth. Yeah? So what are the techniques so far? One, non-violence, ahimsa. Two, satya, truth. Three, shaucha, cleanliness. Four, daya. And five, astikya. Yes. These five, he says, you adopt these five techniques and they will take you away from the tendency of the mind of running behind one, sukha, two, dukha, three, ikcha and four, labha. This negative tendency of the mind can be overcome by these five principles. Clear? So far? Yeah? The next part of it is charitrayani. Paripal Niyani. Charitra is a Hindi word. Make this your own character, your own nature. Paripalayani, follow these. Follow these so that they become a part of your nature, a part of your character. Second sutra is clear. Yeah. Let's move on to the next. Sarvada. Always, sarva bhavena, in all kinds of emotions, sarva bhavena. Yeah, it doesn't matter whether you're feeling happy or sad or angry or 
hurt or disappointed, dejected, annoyed, excited, super excited, passionate, whatever the bhava is, whatever the emotion is. Always in every emotion, nishchinter, be devoid of worry. Do not worry. Bhagwan eva bhajaniya, share it with Bhagwan or God. This is in continuation with Astik. Yeah? Astikya is to have faith. Only when I have faith in the divine, in that supreme energy, can I have that feeling or that connection with it to want to share, correct? So this is very much in line with the fifth technique that he gave you. Yeah? Share. Share with the Divine, whether you are happy or sad or dejected, whatever it is, whether you have problems or even if everything is fine. Just share with the Divine. Does that mean I have conversations with God and God talks back to me? No, don't get into that kind of a self fooling kind of mode. No, God does not talk back. But it is just that I share emotions so that I do not get into worry. He explained it very beautifully in the beginning. He says, worry belongs to the head and emotions are of the heart. When you are completely in emotions, yeah, worry cannot really stand. Have you noticed this? When you are very sad, very sad and you are crying and crying and crying, you cannot really think. Logic is not working. How much ever somebody else is trying to explain to you, you know, this is right and this is wrong and you are unnecessarily crying and but you are like, uh, just crying. Have you noticed? When you are completely in the heart, the head does not work. So recognize this and take advantage of this. When you are experiencing some bhava, yeah? any bhava that you are experiencing, in all bhavas, he says, all the time, what do you do? You share it with the divine and be devoid of worry. Nishchinter means be devoid of worry. If you jump into dialogue and talking with yourself or logically saying, oh, he did this, she did this, he should have not done this. He, you can jump from the level of the heart to the level of the head and drop the feelings. The feelings will go away. Anyway, feelings are very temporary. But the cycle of worry is what creates stress for you. Have you noticed this? Feelings don't create stress for you. It is the cycle of worry that creates stress. And then stress shows up here. Oh, this is paining, this is paining, that is paining. Blood pressure is high. You have to go to, to the doctor. You have to take so many pills. All this is because of worry. Because of being in the head. So here, Narada is telling you to direct this. Channelize this through the emotions rather than through the head. Isn't it a fantastic formula? Yeah. So whatever feelings you experience, don't let them go into worry. You share them with the divine. Share with the divine means if you need to cry, sit and just cry. Be 100% in the emotion. If you need to be angry be angry with the divine lord krishna lord rama jesus christ whoever you believe in doesn't matter keep their idol in front of you and start fighting with god yeah? let god be your best friend you fight at fight with him shout at him scream at him get all the negativity out Whenever there is some emotion, do not let it turn to worry. This is the key of the sutra. Nishchinter. Yeah? Do not let it turn into chinta. Yeah? Chinta is worry. 
constantly thinking about the same thing again and again like a broken record in the head is called worry. Yeah? It's called chinta. You be nish chinter. Got it? And let it pour out through the emotional channel rather than the channel of the head which goes on and on and which creates stress. Clear? This sutra is clear. It's in continuation with the fifth technique. And the next sutra is also a continuation of the same. But before we go to the next sutra, homework for you. Make the divine your valentine. Or make the divine your best friend. Yes? Today you have a contract with the divine that whenever there is some emotional upheaval in my life, I am going to come to you and I am going to just pour out all the emotions. Yes, I am going to be done with it at the emotional level. I am not going to let that convert into worry and make it stressful not only for me but for everybody around. Yes, worry is your greater enemy. Recognize this. That is why the wise one gets it done at the emotional level. Yeah. So, homework for you. Make the divine your valentine. Yeah. And when you have that kind of a connection with the Lord, with the divine, with God, yeah, out of your faith, what happens? Sir Kirtyamana. Huh? When you have that connection with the divine like that or you glorify or love God like that. Shigram, quickly. Eva Veer Bhavati Anubhavayati Bhaktan. Very quickly he comes to you or divine love as an experience happens to you very quickly. Once you have established that connection with him. This sutra has very beautiful words. Avir Bhavati. Avir Bhavati means to reveal himself. Yeah, as in God is not hidden behind the cloud somewhere up in the sky. Yeah? The divinity is present within me only. But because of my negativity, my thick curtain of negativity, I cannot see that divinity within. Yeah. When I establish a connection with that divinity, whenever I'm emotional, I let it out there. Yeah. I have that faith. I maintain cleanliness of the mind. I am established in satya or truth. I'm established in ahimsa or non-violence. I am completely full of my core nature, compassion and I don't let this negative uh, layers of Raga Dvesha overtake me. I establish a connection with that divinity by signing that contract. All my emotions I let out in front of you. You are my divine, my valentine. You are my best friend. The moment I've established this connection, what happens? The divine also reciprocates. So the first step is me praying to the divine which was in the previous sutra where I let go of all my emotions. Yeah? That is the first step. The second step, the divine responding back to my prayer. That response can only be experienced in deep meditation. In that deep meditation, Aver Bhavati, the Divine reveals Himself. Anu Bhavayati Bhaktan means He lets the Bhakta or the devotee experience Him. Again, Guruji said, do not fool yourself. It is not that God is going to talk to you or give you a message. It's not going to happen as a human conversation. But it is that experience of 
peace within that experience of joy that experience of love that you are and he give you examples when you really sing in satsang with your full heart and completely dissolved into into that bhajan into that song when you come out of satsang you feel so beautiful so refreshed rejuvenated full of energy yes that is nothing but being in close touch with the divine and with such experiences slowly slowly you grow closer to the divine got it yes narada bhakti sutra 17 clear quickly we'll summarize yeah if you have this feeling that i am not in divine love and i'm still lost in the maya of the world yeah first step is to recognize what are you lost in it would be sukha dukha ichha or labha pleasure or pain or greed or desire yes when these come up what do you do first of all recognize yes this is what is happening to me yeah well you drop them tyakta is drop you wait for that time when divine love automatically springs up from within even half a second do not waste in sukha dukha ichha and labha yes now when desire or ichha comes up or wanting that sukha or not wanting that dukha all these desires come up and it's not happening the way i want anger can come up i can become violent i can spread negativity around so to stop that he has given us techniques what are the techniques one what is the first technique ahimsa non violence to satya third shaucha fourth daya and fifth astikya which is faith now in faith he has again given you two sutras one where you have faith in that divine and become completely open with that divine establish a connection in your prayer to the divine make him your best friend pour out all the emotions but being nischint there devoid of worry because worry is nothing but the base of raga and dvesha which again relates back to sukha dukha labha and and ichha yes so recognize this that this being devoid of worry is the most important part of prayer that is why i pour all the emotions to the divine i surrender the ego to the divine this is the first part this is prayer then the divine responds back when you are 100% connected with the divine yes when you are kirtyamana when you are completely in love with the divine you glorify the divine there is 100% surrender to the divine yes then shigram shigram quickly quickly the divine reveals himself and you experience the divine yes. these were the shortcuts that narada gave you for experiencing that divinity that divine love that you are so do your homework this week constantly keep a check on all that ichha and labha and wanting sukha and running away from dukha constantly keep an observation of it yeah and constantly keep applying ahimsa satya shaucha daya and astikya yeah and constantly surrendering to the divine all your emotions yeah and becoming hollow and empty and when you are hollow and empty it will happen now don't sit with this expectation oh i'm going to meditate today i'm going to be hollow and empty and the divine will reveal himself oh i'll see a white light a blue light oh i can't see a white light why is it not happening 
another feverishness. This is also labha, wanting to gain now something. No. Do not get into spiritual gain. Yeah. You drop material gain, but then you land up into spiritual gain. Yeah? This is again another roller coaster ride. So don't get onto it. Yeah? You stop. Your job is done at praying. At 100% making that divine your valentine and praying and letting out the emotions in surrendering the ego. You become hollow and empty. That's it with no expectations. Yeah. You just keep the door of your heart open. Let him come when he must come. Let him decide when he wants to come. Yeah. So I'll leave you on that note tonight and I will see you next week for the last Narada Bhakti Sutra. So next week is last Narada Bhakti Sutra means exam is coming up soon. So start studying. See you soon. Jai Gurudev.